Hello, everybody. Big thank you for joining me today for day 37 of 40 Days of Praise. We are almost at the end of 40 Days of Praise, um, but by the grace of God, songs of praise will never depart from our mouths and our homes in Jesus' mighty name. Um, I really appreciate those who have been joining me on Zoom, those who have been joining me on Facebook Live, those who have opened their homes to me, those who have visited me, like my good friend here, you, and um, those who are going to watch replays on YouTube. I'm very, very grateful. I'm equally grateful to those who have reached out to me to ask questions and to be part of the project to send a token to the indigent, namely widows, widowers, orphans, and rural ministers. Thank you so very much. I got a pleasant surprise when I got home today. I got a box of something, but I don't, I didn't see a name on it. I don't know who this anonymous person is. I'm very grateful. Thank you so much. So the party is just beginning. We're just getting started. This is the first time. This is going to be about 10 minutes long in which I'm telling a story about my life and God's goodness and mercy. And I'm singing a song and there is a sing along as well. Um, so yesterday I talked about how God answered my prayer to the minute detail about getting a job when I relocated to the UK. And today I'm going to talk about how things changed. Um, like we probably all know that change is the constant in life. Something is always changing. Either we are changing or something around us is changing. And we're usually having to adjust in some way to these changes through the help of God, of course. Um, so today is about those changes and those transitions. I remember, excuse me, when I got a job with this wonderful professor where I had my first job, I remember asking him that how many people have worked with you and left you to further their career? How many people have gone on to become specialists? Because at this point, I definitely did not want to be tied down in a setting in which I was not going to progress. So he was then telling me, oh, someone has passed through here, has become a GP, someone has passed through here, is now a professor of medicine, someone has passed through here, is a pediatrician, and all of that. I said, that is amazing. That's the kind of thing I want to hear because I don't intend to come here and sit down, I need to move on. Um, so I had spent about six months there and I had a great time there. And at that point, I wasn't even thinking of moving anymore and become comfortable. And my professor, we always say, Tammy Tokwe is going to leave us. Tammy Tokwe is going to do training. <laughs> and in my mind, I say, oh, prof, don't say that. I like it here. But, you know, sometimes we have to get out of our comfort zone to stretch and become bigger or greater than we were yesterday. So I had to change jobs um, and had to do different exams and things like that. So I got another job in another part of town. And I took the job because of the time off. So it was going to be intensive work for about um, eight weeks or so. And then you were going to get six weeks off. And I said, oh my God, time off. So that was one of the reasons I took the job. It was a critical care job and it was 12 hour shifts. And oh God, I prayed. I prayed my heart out when I was working there. And I was going to work, God help me, God save me. Don't let me make a mistake, help me. <laughs> I went to bed praying and I woke up praying. Not as if I'm praying less now, but oh, it was it was necessary because it was like being thrown into a deep end and having to learn everything and being in a new terrain. And it was a bit anxiety wracking. And sometimes when I left my home by eight and came back by 8 p.m., all I could do would just be warm a pack of food, eat a pack of food, put up the lights and just go to bed and wake up the next day and start work. Very draining, but those changes were necessary because of where I, I hoped to go, which was into training. And as God would have it, I went into training in a lovely seaside town called Scarborough. Let me just say a little bit about my landing in Scarborough. So when I got to Scarborough, it's a beautiful town, but I didn't see anybody looking like me. In fact, when I got to the town center and I saw another dark skinned person looking like me, I beamed I just smiled at the person because I began to feel oh my god am I the only one here that kind of thing but that was just the beginning so we had an induction like in most hospitals you have an induction when you start so we had an induction on a Wednesday 
I walked on the ward on a Tuesday. On Friday, my supervisor, who was um, Asian, called me and said he wanted to have a meeting with me on Monday. So I thought, okay, maybe this to discuss as training to supervise or kind of thing. Only for me to get there on Monday. And he said that um, he wants to speak to me because eight people have reported me. In my mind, I said, eight people. Eight people, including a consultant, nurses, patients. In my mind, I said, really? Now said they did, they said this, they said that. In fact, I, I could not speak. You know, sometimes you just hear some things, you are just short of words. I could not speak. I just, I just burst into tears. I said, why are they lying? <laughs> I was so upset. And then he now said, you know, sometimes in this place, if something happens with one person, they just tell themselves around. So you have to be very, very careful and all of that. And then he began to explain how he had felt and how he had sometimes been maligned. And he kind of understood in a way, let's put it that way. It also appeared like some of the people on the ward had thought that maybe I was a locum doctor, I mean, like a contract staff, and that maybe if they said enough nasty things on the first day, then maybe I would not be retained. Unknown to them, I was a trainee. So as, as God will have it, they were stuck with me for six months. And all I can say is that things got better. But just hearing that and seeing that, you know, within three days, I'm not giving a benefit of a doubt. I'm going to think, ah, this is not my first hospital. This is my third hospital in the UK. I've done physical care job. I've talked about to different people, palliative care. What's, what, what, what could have happened here? So it was a huge shock. And I remember telling my mom, and my mom said, we are going to pray. We are going to pray. And God answers prayer. God, God brought people that were with me in that town and they were just like family. One of them I was working with on the ward, a lovely lady. The other one was a brother to me, my brother Patrick. As in, it was, it ended up being a great time. And then my consultant on the ward just happened to be fond of me, a lovely German lady. She was very fond of me. Sometimes she said, Timmy, you can lead the round, you can lead the round. <laughs> so it ended up being, of course, I used to see the glances sometimes, but yes, God caused me to overcome. So today's song is about waging war. I remember talking to a young lady who was down in the dumps, primary school or so, or secondary school, and saying, trying to walk around slouched because people were picking on her. And I said, I'm sorry, darling. I wish I could tell you that life is going to get easier, but that's not the case. You're going to have to fight. When you were born, you were born this way. We're all going to have to fight our way through it. So you're going to have to stand up and say no and say, I deserve a space here. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the truth has to be told, but definitely we need help to fight this war and we need help to wage this war and we need help to win this war. And through the blood of Jesus, we are more than conquerors. So that's the short story for today. And I will just be singing the song next. It's a beautiful song by C.C. Winans. It's been sung a long time ago, but I probably heard this song maybe four or five years ago. It's called Waging War. And then the sing-along is a Yoruba song, which means arise, arise and war, arise and fight. That's telling God, arise and war on my behalf, arise and fight on my behalf and bring help for your child. That's the, the the day togun togun, the day tija tija, the day alone me, the day kowa she in wofu omore. That is one of the sing alongs. And the second sing along is Jehovah is your name, mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah is your name. But first, I would sing the song. I will do my best. <clears throat> Anoint my head. Anoint my feet, send your angels raining down here on the battleground. For your glory, we're taking territory, fighting unseen enemies like never before. We're waging war. I'm tired of principalities messing with me. I'm tired of the devil stealing from me. I promise he won't get one more thing. I'm ready for a battle, we're waging war. In your name, your rule and reign, never been defeated anymore. We're waging war, tired of principalities, 
messing with me, waging war. I'm tired of the devil stealing from me, waging war. Promise he won't get one more thing, waging war. Taking it back, taking territory. I'm ready for a battle. I'm ready to win, waging war. My weapon of power, it lives within, waging war. I can't be defeated. The enemy's got to flee, waging war. I'm taking it back, taking territories. Going into battle, going into battle, going into battle. Fire by night, cloud by day, a strong tower, Lord, sent the latter rain, Lion of Judah, Lord, God, mighty in battle, since you did it back then, I know you'll do it again, we're waging war. Lovely song, try and check it out, it's such a beautiful song. Okay, so the sing along. Dideti togun togun, dideti ja ti ja, dide olorumi, dide olorumi, ko wa shiran wa fo more, dide togun togun, dideti ja ti ja, dide olorumi, dide olorumi, ko wa shiran wa fo more. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Mighty warrior, great in battle. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. We are rounding up shortly. Try not to miss any day and invite a friend. Thank you so much. God bless you. Yeah.